Hey, what's up? So I just want to show you pictures uh, of buildings across the world built by the previous humanity, which was reset um, by the 1800s. This is Lima, Peru, the capital of Peru, the country. And of course, this was there before. So it's up to you to believe if this was built by the Spaniards, by the Spanish people or by the Peruvian people. Peruvian people, but in my opinion, and as far as I can see, and across all the world, this building was built by a different humanity with machine cutting techniques uh, before the 1800s. So yeah, um, off, off, awesome stuff. Of course, it's for some people. It's gonna, just gonna be you're a lunatic. Just uh, go back to school because uh, everybody knows that those things were built by the um, by the Spanish and the conquerors. And then this is Russia. Uh, just throw some pictures as well. This is also like a typical old city but again the construction building these huge buildings on on bridges um st with stone and everything giant books um nobody in their sane mind uh, a human being with these type of hands would actually make these big books because it would be so terrible to read them so but if it was like giant people then and giant intelligent people then that would be very normal this is the pop population of the world in the 1800s uh, very zombie-like looking, so everybody was like dressed the same. As you can see, no social distancing and everything. This was the initial steps uh, when humans were brought in, new humans after the reset. Nobody knows what that reset was. If it was like a, a, a war or um, a catastrophe, uh, a, a catastrophe, sorry, or something like that, or simply like they just wiped out the whole of humanity, or they they fought against somebody else, but primitive people like the new people were primitive so yeah no not much knowledge and these people like that's why i put these pictures together because it's impossible for these people to be for their grandfathers and their dads and everything and their parents and their great grandfathers to build all this this is in 1893 and everything is made of stone and huge like like tons and tons and perfection this is the republic the old republic this is chicago right so this is the true republic of the united states uh, not like the united states came afterwards right so for, before the united states this was what was in america and north america and 1893 in colombia and yeah and then we have the incubators the baby incubators that's also very interesting it was baby shows people will actually go and see babies during the show and that would if you do this today it would be like something way out of your of, it would be actually probably forbidden and people actually would buy babies they had these incubators and it would just it'd be, they would be on display so you can imagine maybe they were made in a lab and they would uh, be brought as infants and you would just buy them like anything else and then you yeah, have to have these people here so you can actually see these were not the builders of these huge buildings um which you can see everywhere in the world it's the same technique with the same columns and the same uh, type and statues and everything in russia america australia asia africa africa were actually wiped out quite a lot they were reset and then the magnificent uh, techniques with waters and everything the gondolas the grand bays and again no uh, construction photos actually this one was so big i actually had to cut it in three pieces so you have here the bottom side imagine this, look at this magnificent uh, and there's no construction pictures so this was found there by these humans and then you see the upper side and lots of the buildings in america they look exactly the same as the buildings in india and the arab countries so nothing in common which means that christianity and in the the hindu religion and buddhism and all that stuff that came afterwards right it came after the 1800s or probably after the 1700s and um and the new people they just came in and they saw these things and said wow uh, that's just in incredible i mean, I, I actually go crazy nuts right i mean as in like wow uh, when you see this and you actually know they're not the builders and then the incubators as well and this was like the early the late 1800s and early 1900s and they already had this technology so you can actually imagine maybe they were they were given this technology to actually produce um, babies like so that's why we have the orphans afterwards because lots of people including from my family from my great grandfathers they didn't know their parents which means it could mean that they were artificially produced humans and then distributed with the orphan trains in many places in the world including america europe australia russia and um other places and that's something that people don't like to speak about because obviously that would mean that you come obviously you were born naturally from your parents and your parents from your great parents and that stuff but at the end like those people who lived in the 1800s the original your great great whatever uh, was made in a lab and that's something that people don't don't like then this is primitive people so you can actually see they were really primitive back even up until the second world war people were very primitive uh, very simple and like just like 
pretty much like animals to be honest uh, there was no knowledge uh, they were just slaves uh, and yeah and that's you know the world went through different social experiments and now we're living a social experiment as well these are pictures from people who just look at them right they're so simple and it's impossible for these kind of humans and their grandparents and stuff to build the huge um pictures that i'm showing you on this channel usually and let's see more like for example to build all this it's like the picture i like this picture because you can actually see the whole thing and uh, not the best of a detail but there you go and yeah let's just see some more how do you cut this you need a huge machine to cut this stone and obviously you need good technology and when and who had this back in the day and then this is like the crystal palace uh, in Amsterdam, which doesn't exist anymore, they said it was burned by fire. Again, massive. And you see the technology here, like the this technology, it's impossible with this primitive technology uh, pushing like uh, wooden carts to actually build such a thing. And then you have capital buildings all over the world. Uh, the same stuff, the same style. You have like some different, minor differences here and there, but it's the same thing with this huge dome and... Um, huge columns and the triangle and the statues and it's all the same thing over again and then you have these mud streets so you have these huge buildings which by the way they call them uh, temples and churches but actually antennas so they're power stations many of them are connected underground with tunnels and then you have these uh, these uh, dirt roads it's it's not possible first you build roads and transport so after after we have roads and transport in place you build the buildings but like in canada for example you have all these impressive amazing be like 1876 and Canada is one of the youngest countries in the world and in those days there was no way they would actually have the technology and the power and then you have all these places where like, they're surrounded by dirt and there was like no no way of transportation even the railways I think they were actually um, the original railways uh, not the ones that they built afterwards because then they expanded but there were some original railways and you have the, the metro stations underneath which are like under many feet of many meters of earth they were brought in um they were built by others and uh, like all these buildings san francisco of course again we spoke about san francisco it's impossible for twenty-five thousand people who are primitive uh, gold searchers to build san francisco in such a short period of time and uh yeah it's um it's there there you go uh buildings huge buildings huge domes uh everywhere in the world humans that again and you know the pictures speak for themselves check out this the details here i can see this everywhere in the world how you extract energy and stuff people say oh they're just building it because of the norm right i mean they receive orders to be huge again yeah the pyramid here the columns this is in the states by the way look at how tiny puny we are compared to all these buildings uh, and then you have this technology. So yeah, there you go. Uh, you never get, uh, it never gets old, right? And you, and you go from America to India and to Russia and you just like the tourism in the world, like digital tourism. And you see all this, you see this in Italy as well. This is like in some kind of Indian, India or Turkey or stuff. And it's the same principle over and over again. So the same humanity. Unfortunately, people say it's Tartaria. It's not, um, there's, this is a water tower. Again, impressive, massive. And how do you actually, put this like who does it and then you have the dirt road it's it's not possible dirt road came afterwards so yeah you know with all the the flooding and everything and we all certainly we don't know the whole thing but we do know that some people are actually making fun of us when they do these videos of tartaria and everything was tartaria it's not Tartaria was just a part a minor part of all this this is the republic um and then you have some kind of disaster happening this is the true republic the old republic which was probably a republic in the whole world not just in north america um and yeah the horticulture building which again a huge dome and crystals and all these bits and pieces and it's just it, it, you get headaches just by imagining the amount of work um and then you you understand that these people are just brought in they're not the ones that built all this and then you have all these star fortresses in the world star fortress cities the world is full of them like if you want to make a video you would spend a week at least 
and in these huge buildings here some of them don't exist anymore because they were like but then when you compare them with the energy and you understand then afterwards how you extract energy from the ether and you have all these holes and everything and the the expansion of the of the sound waves and it's just fac fascinating and magnificent lots of this was was uh, was lost they say oh san francisco and all the pla those places they actually suffered earthquakes and fires <laughs> and they say the fire was like natural fire more like uh, direct energy weapons uh, the cathedral in cologne and um, in germany again uh, built in the medieval ages how there's no like everybody knows it's not a cathedral it's like a power station and it just pff, i mean you look at it it's impossible for somebody with a hammer and sizzle to actually build all this and then in san francisco as well we're just jumping really really uh, quickly let's go for the for these then this is like in europe uh, well europe and india this is india again domes and everything then we have like the republic again all these buildings baby shows incubators we understand how it's all linked uh, and then you have these uh, black people in europe right like holy roman empire maria of austria 16th century and she's black uh, amazing right uh, and daughter of charles V. so were they whites in europe were they black uh joanne archduchess of, archduchess of austria in front of castile and aragon spain stuff and she looks like a black bird Person, right uh, on the coins this is definitely a black person her name is elizabeth of bohemia so why would you actually do this why would you actually go through all the the pain of doing these coins before the 1800s and so was it like this humanity a black humanity in europe it says here like um christian and they were black so obviously this is like uh, like 16th 17th century europe and then a, a young archer dutch uh, circa 1640 so in the 17th century the dutch would represent a young soldier of the holy roman empire during the 30 years war as black so yeah it's it's fascinating right so that uh, chafariz uh king of alfama district um this is like the the king's fountain in lisbon in portugal and then look at this he uh, unless he's wearing something but his hands everything is black so does this mean that uh, europe was governed by a black nobility or um uh, and everything they, they they had wars with a white nobility and something like that so george augustus Poa green bridge tower uh, 18th 19th century was born in galicia poland there's galicia and spain and galicia in poland that's very fascinating as well how poland has the same region as spain which is called galicia and this guy is uh, Moorish, so yeah, and, and but he was from Poland. But in Poland, you have like uh, white people and white girls, which are actually very cute and very beautiful. But anyway, so Dutch boy in the 17th century, um, yeah, a Dutch boy, right? I mean, unless this is like this was changed in some way to just like laugh at, in your face, but as far as i know in the netherlands like the, the original population is white right and they have these like statues with their nose destroyed and you can see if it, the, their figures are black right so they point out to the black humanity and they pretty much destroy their noses to actually because there's a certain feature with the nose um in black people that they have different like um the nose is a bit different than from the white and the asians so yeah and um yeah you have like well-dressed people so i'm just wondering how much of this um of the whole like uh, slavery thing is true or not because uh, in the end like those who are victors they make history believed to be james francis edward stewart prince james third of england england and unless the the photo was changed why would you change this right why would you actually go to all the the effort of changing the color of the face and everything and then anne of denmark grandmother of king charles ii stewart black as well uh, and uh, some of them like they were actually you know like you go to Africa and there's some countries in Africa where you have black people but they have like they look like white people so the only difference is that they have their skin black but the the face and everything and, and the whole thing they're they're whites so the difference is that they're, they're white black people right so their faces and everything they look just like Europeans but they're black and that's in Ethiopia I think Ethiopia and other places and then you have these um these things which are very amazing uh like uh, built in many places by they say Spain and stuff by the Moorish people and then they have the, these like colors with uh, white and red power stations uh, technology which was petrified just like the giant petrified trees but you see it's technology for some purpose we do not know petrified technology so stone on top of metal how do you do this how, how does, does this happen and when and how much time do you need to actually have this happening and let's go to the last picture which is like capital buildings i'm speaking about washington right now but these capital buildings all across the states alaska arizona arkansas california and other colorado they're the same right so were they built like uh, colorado georgia were they connecticut were they built illinois uh, in the in the 18th century uh, they have enough 
money and stuff like manpower there's no construction photos in many in many cases so what if this was actually there beforehand or what if somebody else built it and then these guys they just came in like kentucky and they took the place and it's the same principle like russia has the same india has the same uh, australia has the same south america has the same europe uh, and unfortunately for us many of them they were destroyed but then you go here, here we go so lots of capital buildings the domes and everything everywhere tennessee um and uh yeah continuing uh, not not having all the names but the important thing is here what they look like right in the, in the very end so, so yeah it's uh, incredible hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one this is an epic video a bit of a testimony for robert wadlow the tallest man in our reset humanity history i'm not going to go into detail because those of you who understand what i'm saying reset humanity 1800s you will understand he lived between 1918 and 1940 very short life only 22 years uh old when he passed away so just a bit of his life uh robert wadlow his full name tallest man in the world uh, world record was born in alton illinois usa february 22nd 1918 to harold franklin his dad and addie may wadlow his mom and was the oldest of five children uh, nobody anticipated that uh, a normal baby because he was born normal and he grew up to the world's tallest man he was nicknamed elton giant or the giant of illinois when he turned one one year old he was already three feet and five inches which is 1.05 meters and he weighed 45 pounds by the age of five he had to wear clothes intended for a 17 year old uh, guy as he reached the height of five feet four inches which is 1.63 meters or 163 centimeters uh, three years later when he was eight uh, the soon-to-be tallest man in the world outgrew and outweighted his own father as he towered at the height of six feet and two inches that's 187 centimeters and weighed 200 pounds 90 kilos and when he got to his graduation from alton high school in 1936 so at the age of uh, 18 he was eight feet four inches that's 254 centimeters 2.54 meters he wasn't done growing however and ultimately reached the height the maximum height in, in his life of eight feet and 11 inches that's 2.72 meters 272 centimeters when he died at the age of 22 years old uh, so the question is why did robert wadlow grow up to be so gigantic doctors they diagnosed they diagnosed him with hyperplasia of the pituitary gland a pituitary, pituitary gland sorry a, which is a condition that caused rapid and excessive growth uh, due to what's called a abnormally high level of human growth hormones in the body so that's my point here please do not um, confuse the situation of Robert Wadlow, which is a uh, medical condition, with the situation of other human beings. When you watch them, when you look at them, when you see archives of those people, they have a natural uh, growth in their human body, okay? Uh, so even by the time of his death, there was no indication that his growth had ended. So he was still growing, even at the age of 22. Uh, so that's what we call a medical condition, right? An, an, an anomalous condition, medically speaking and he grew up to be very high his parents and family tried to make his life as normal as possible he was quiet and mild-mannered uh, which led to him being called a gentle giant he did enjoy photography and playing guitar until his hands grew too large to do either so he was so so big in his hands he was not able to hold a camera or a guitar schools made special desks for him adding wooden blocks to the bottom so he wouldn't have to hunch over in class and then um, he required leg braces when walking and had little feeling in his legs and feet however he never used a wheelchair uh, so he was able to walk now wadlow became a celebrity after his 1936 united states tour when he was 18 years old with the ringling brother circus appearing at madison square garden and the boston garden um, and during his appearances he dressed in his everyday clothes and refused the circus's request that he wear a top hat and tails because he didn't want to be seen as a ridiculous you know like in a circus so in order to travel the country his father had to modify the car of the family 
he removed the front passenger seat so that his son could sit in the back seat and stretch his legs. And in 1938, he began to promote uh, with this promotional tour with the International Shoe Company, which provided him shoes free of charge, again, only in his everyday street clothes. And he saw himself working in advertising um, and he didn't want to exhibit as a freak. So that's why he wanted to be seen as a normal man wearing normal clothes. He possessed a great physical strength until the last few days of his life, which is common, right? If you're so big and giant, then you have a lot of strength. One year before his death, Wadlow passed uh, John Rogan as the tallest person ever. So that was on June 27th, 1940, 18 days before his death, he was measured by doctors at eight feet, 11.1 inches, that's 272 centimeters, 2.72 meters. And on July 4th, 1940, uh, he has a professional appearance at the Manistee National Forest Festival. A faulty brace irritated his ankle that led to an infection. He was treated with a blood transfusion and surgery, but his condition worsened uh, due to what is called a autoimmune disorder. So he died in his sleep on July 15th, 1940. Uh, the coffin measured 10 feet and nine inches. That's 3.28 meters or 328 centimeters long. And it was uh, two feet and eight inches. That's 0 0.81 meters wide and the depth was 76 centimeters or two feet, six inches. Um, it, weighted a, it weighed a thousand pounds, which is 450 kilos, uh, the coffin, and was carried by 12 um, uh, peoples, uh, sorry, but by 12 like uh, pallbearers and eight assistants. And um, there's a life-size statue of Wadlow, uh, which is erected opposite the Alton Museum of History and Art in 1986. Uh, they also made several, like, during history, it was songs, a song called The Tallest Man, The Broadest Shoulders, uh, in, in his, uh, in, by Savjan Stevens, and then in 2005, there was this concept album, Illinois, concerning historical figures and events of the statue. And at this Alton Museum of History and Art, visitors can see photos of Wadlow since he was, uh, you know, in, in life. And then the photos you see in the video are just photos with, with the family members, with his dad as well, with a car, with his brother, um, also with different meetings at dinner, when he was 10 years old, when he was 17 years old, with his, his brother sitting on the chair, the, the, the giant shoes he was wearing uh, with different people like... Uh, when he was aboard the Queen Mary in 1937, when he was uh, making himself a jacket in uh, 1939 uh, with a telescope, um, also comparing his shoe sizes with his little brother when he his shoe size was gigantic, enormous, 36 for the United States, um, and different like uh, pictures with actresses and with famous people in the world. Uh, he was in Miami, Florida as well. He was in New York. Uh, he was in Omaha, Nebraska, and several other pictures with family members and people around the world when he, around the, around the US when he toured. Uh, also with Mary Pickford at the St. Louis airport and also with a boxing legend, Primo Carnera. Uh, boxing legend, actually, uh, he was six feet, nine inches tall and Robert was seven, was seven inches and sorry, seven feet and two inches. So when Robert was 12 years old, he uh, outgrew the boxing legend Primo Carnera. And then there's a picture, famous picture on the internet with his whole family and um, with the group of uh, Sons of the Pioneers, uh, the Texas Centennial. And uh, also a very interesting picture is when you see the shoe size. So Wad Wadlow's shoe is uh, United States 37 AA or European size 75. Now for those of you who are European, when we say 4850, that for us is a big um, leg a bit big feet right when you say European shoe size 75 and you can see that one of the pictures it displays that is gigantic massive so imagine in this case Wadlow had a medical condition right but imagine people who get to be as high as him as tall as him sorry back in the day but with no medical condition so they just like have a normal condition normal human being at that height can you imagine how strong they are how powerful how and i guess that was um 
that's one of the reasons why the Smithsonian and all these things that happen in the world, you know, by hiding the skeletons of giants. And as we see in those newspapers in the 1800s, uh, which are in the archives, if you if you look for them, giants uh, as tall as Wadlow or taller, but with no medical condition. Just like you know, they they just were like that. You know, they were like tall humans, and that was that's mighty amazing. So, yeah, hopefully you understood something about from this video, and uh, hopefully this you know the amount of pictures are enough to showcase and display um, the height of this unique man that lived and is considered the tallest in our humanity history. Take care.